Bestwochen-Podcast mit Clarissa Stadler und Nada el -Azar. Die Wiener Festwochen danken ihren Hauptsponsoren Erste Bank und Wiener Städtische. Hello and welcome back to Wiener Festwochen-Podcast. My name is Clarissa Stadler and today's guests are Dorothea Zeiringer and Tina Söd, also known as the performance group Söd Zeiringer. Welcome. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. They collaborate since 2012 and create performative work situated at the intersection of visual arts, dance and theater. Their work is minimalist and to me, if I may say that, it represents also a typical Wiener Schmie, com <laughs> combines with classical <laughs> slapstick elements. Hello and welcome again. Dorothea and Tina, you have been invited by Wiener Festwochen to explore the archives and find out more about female representation within the last 70 years. Can you maybe talk about this? What did you find out in these archives? So basically, maybe first to say Collier approached us last spring. Uh, I think he has seen our piece Running Gag, which deals with... Um, um, how women are represented in slapstick films in the 1910s and 1920s. And it was basically a lecture performance. And so he knew that we were interested in working with archive material. So he called us and asked us if we would be interested. But then Tina and me, we were both in uh, different countries at the time. And we thought, okay, we have to work with something that is already online. So we worked with um, the digitized programs of Wiener Festwochen. And um, we kind of looked through them. They had like, so they were already online. It was really like, it's like kind of exclusive. Or like, I mean, it's not very, no, but not everyone can look at them, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's not public yet, I guess. Yeah, it's not public yet. So that was really nice to have. And so that's how we got excited. Yeah. And um, we thought, okay, we have to do something with that. Yeah. And at first we were just looking through the programs and looking for things that would interest us, not really being sure what exactly we will do. And um, when we started noting down how women and women's roles were described in the programs. Um, But may I ask, what kind of stuff did you find? I mean, was that old photos, old videos, old texts, or what, were, what yeah, we material were did you find? Uh, at first we were looking at everything, but quite soon we decided to only focus on texts because mm -hmm. also in the older programs there often are no photos and sometimes there's also very little text or almost no text at all. Um, and it was a lot about how women were represented in these texts. So it was a lot about um, how, like how directors or the festival programmer, how they were writing about these women in these plays. Um, and we, we decided not to actually watch the plays, <laughs> but it was all about the kind of representation and what can be found afterwards mm -hmm. when you look back at these plays. And can you maybe give an example, um, like how women were described or what kind of text you found? Mm -hmm. uh, we started writing down like very shortly, kind of like, um, yeah, what what happened, what, what did the woman do and... Um, And there were several roles that were repeating throughout the week. Exactly. years. For example, um, women who killed. That <laughs> yeah. was one category that interested us. And then we But why? <laughs> why are you interested in the category women who kill? Because it's like, uh, it's such a dramatic thing. And it's like something that really happens a lot, especially in like uh, more classical plays that get played over and over again. Um, so... Like yeah. Greek tragedies, for example. Yeah, or, exactly. And, yes. and also later ones. I think there's, there's really a lot there. It's like this one very typical role that women can so have. So this seems uh, to be one stereotype, like women who kill. Um, what other roles did you find? Uh, then also what was the most cu current role you found? Most, hmm, that's uh. hard to say. I think in the contemporary ones... It's like, of course, less stereotypical and there's much more variety. I think there maybe there were more instances where women were somehow, um, I don't know, seen as like animalistic or um, mysterious or something like this. 
And how about women who love? Yes, that yes, was also, also very, that's also a big yeah, category. Yeah, we um, had a big category of women who fall in love and another really big category of women who get married, which sometimes was totally separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one was, for example, women who leave or women who are objectified. So it like kind of it was also in a way like we were creating kind of this, this personal archives in yeah. a way. So it was So you subjective. created the categories, yeah, right? So we created yeah. the okay, categories. Okay, so you have your categories and now you have all this uh, material um, you found in the archives of Mina Festwochen and it's uh, 70 years so it's uh, really a uh, long period for statistical uh, research. And what do you do now with all this research? Um, so yeah. we wanted to do something a bit more abstract in the end. So it was clear to us that we also we didn't have the time really to make a, a long lecture performance because the, uh, like the um, proposal was also to to do a like kind of 20 minutes performance that could be continued afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. after, so it was kind of this. Um, I think now there are a lot of performances that are uh, yeah that are. Uh, It's a lot about being in the middle of the process, of the mm -hmm. working process. So it gave us just a chance to somehow start something, but still we wanted to, we wanted to show some, like a performance that is in a way still working in the evening. So that is in a way still like finished, finished or yeah. Mm -hmm. Complete in itself. Maybe we should talk about your performances yeah. because uh, maybe some people do not uh, know how uh, your artistic work looks like. And you have a um, really excellent homepage where um, everything can be seen, um, many videos about uh, your work. So I had a look on your work. Um, and um, as I said in the beginning, it's uh, really... Um, it's really between theater and slapstick and, and also visual arts. But uh, there are some things that are really striking. For example, um, I found out that very often <laughs> you use uh, cardboard boxes. Um, and in general, one might say that um, you, you have a very um, simple, very pure um, approach to, towards um, theater. Um, so where are your roots? Uh, would, you, would you say that you're... Um, influenced by minimalist theater or theater of the absurd, like Beckett, or <laughs> well, we both studied fine arts, and that's also how we met when I was uh, on exchange here in Vienna. But since the very beginning, we were really interested in performance uh, specifically, and and we were b both watching a lot of um actually uh, performance art in Vienna like we were going to yeah. theaters a lot um and somehow yeah i guess from this uh, like our so collaboration began yeah. are you influenced by um artists like Vali Export for example or rather women like Marina Abramovic because <laughs> you once said that it's very difficult to find female role models right. in the yeah. um, performance yes, arts yes. but Vienna is a good uh, Yeah. example that you could find <laughs> well I think we, we I mean we, for example in our last piece we refer to a lot of performance artists like um, and we kind of yeah there, there is this kind of reference but I wouldn't say that our our own work or our artistic approach is um, is so influenced by these artists yeah. I mean I it's, it's yeah it's difficult to say like so directly I think it's influenced by all of these artists we have like You mean um, contemporary Viennese artists or because you said um, you decided to do performance because you saw many other performances here in Vienna, so... Yeah, I think it was more like, um, I, I think yeah. maybe, I mean, we went to, we went to Festwochen, we went to Prud a lot, uh, all these, you know, more contemporary places. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I mean, at the academy where, where I studied and also Tina was coming to study for a year, there was, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, like... They teach a lot of this, yeah, about um, Viennese performance art scene uh, coming more from, you know, background mm -hmm. of, of visual arts. But I think we really, we somehow also when we performed or when we showed our performances at the academy, people always said, like, this is very strongly um, coming from theater and for them. So there are these two discourses also happening. Mm -hmm. 
And I think this But also is, yeah. to me, uh, it seems yeah. as if it would come from ah. the theater yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more yeah. than from yeah. visual yeah. arts. I mean, maybe it's also the text. And from a certain yeah. kind of theater, as I said, mm -hmm. it, uh, to me, it looks a bit like um, these old forms of very mm -hmm. um, reduced forms of theater, yeah. like yeah. Theater of the Absurd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think... Um, But isn't it funny that people see that in your work, but you yourself, you do not refer to that um, form of theater? Yeah, I think it's also the thing that uh, we are like so deep in our practice, but it's like a bit difficult to look at it from outside. Mm. And we have all also worked together already for so long that it's like, it's somehow so natural to us what we do together and it's, <laughs> we maybe don't reflect on it so much anymore. Yeah, I think we, we, we kind of together created our language that somehow now, yeah, ex exactly yeah. as you said, seems somehow natural to us now where we mm -hmm. can... Your theater language, your body language, your performance yeah, language, yeah, yeah. you mean, mm -hmm. yes. yes. How did you get to know each other? You said you met at uh, the Academy of Fine Arts. You come from Estonia, Tina, yes. right? Yes. How long have you been uh, in Vienna before? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to say. It has been many years of... Uh, being here and being in other places. Also in the last years I have been based in Romania. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I really So you do not you're not based in Vienna, you do not live here permanently? Uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of on and off. I mean I still I work so much with Dorothea so I'm I'm here for a big part of my time actually. So I was interrupting myself. <laughs> I was asking, <laughs> how did you get to know each other, and how did you, f uh, how did how did you have the idea to work together? Uh, yeah, we met when I was doing my exchange here at Academy, and yeah, I guess we just had some interesting conversations, and somehow found out that we were both really like focused on performance and interested in like similar things and having similar understandings of. Uh, art and I think it was a little bit later that we decided to um, just try to work together and create a short performance for Raw Matters and yeah I think it was really like just a proposal that oh, let's try something together and as soon as we started working together we just realized that we really like have a common way of thinking and like a way of understanding each other's uh, and artistic maybe also approach. A, a common way, a, a common humor, because yeah. Uh, yeah, I, as I said, <laughs> it's a mixture between slapstick and Wiener Schmee and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. it's, uh, so Thank you're you. having fun when you're I mean, this is also, this is also interesting because when we perform in, in, in different countries, we also realize that, you know, in some countries it's sometimes really silent when we perform and sometimes mm -hmm. people in other in other cities people are, are laughing a lot yeah. so we really realized also that it the, the humor doesn't function everywhere the same mm -hmm. um, and what about this cardboard box please mm -hmm. explain because it's ve really very often um, <laughs> that mm. you use this these I mean, this time again, maybe to describe for our, <laughs> for, yeah. for, our, for our public. Um, yeah. Sometimes you you both um, are in the box, so to say, and you walk with the box on your head, or you are. Uh, yeah, I think it's mainly just because cardboard is like a really simple, accessible material, and uh, um, yeah, I think. When we're working, we're often like looking for some kind of material or objects to work with. And um, somehow all the more complicated things um, usually does, don't work for us because somehow our work is so simple and if a uh, object or material is too complex, it's, I don't know, it's, it's not really working. So... Uh, yeah, we are always trying to come back to very simple things. Also, for example, in our uh, recent performance, Angry Hour, we used um, very simple IKEA chairs. Or sometimes a rope, for example. I saw rope. also a rope, very simple. I mean, that was with uh, with microphone cables. We mm -hmm. worked with them ah, in okay. one performance. Yes. So it, it's a lot of material that is already existing that we don't mm -hmm. have to build. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we... we I, something that yeah exactly as you said that is mm -hmm. accessible that is somehow cheap that we can also transport um, to places where we don't have we, we don't like to have a big setup i think it has maybe also something to do with 
the bit of a feminist approach that we are able to set up everything ourselves, mm-hmm. that we're not dependent yeah. on technicians that help mm-hmm. us a lot. Um, and uh, that we can also go with one performance to maybe to different places. So we perform, for example, sometimes the same thing. There's this lecture performance we, we showed in a gallery, but also in theater spaces, um, mm-hmm. in a foyer. So I think there's some interest in going to different um, rooms and spaces. So you mm-hmm. keep it really simple. And uh, what counts is the idea. And the good thing about this is that you don't need big budgets. Mm-hmm. But um, if you had really, really all the money in the world uh, to to do some new stuff, what, what would it be? I mean, if you really had some big yeah. budgets, for example, are there any yeah. dreams you would... I think it's something that we have discussed and actually I think we would do what we anyway do. <laughs> I think it would more stress us out to have too big budgets. Yeah, I think or to like having to make something, I don't know, <laughs> with like 100 performers or yeah, something yeah. like this because I think our work functions the best if it's, you know, just the two of us with like... Uh, I don't know. I would say you, are the, of cardboard you are the ideal artist for every festival. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need big budgets. Um, I mean, now we're working with. Uh, we're having a new project where we're working with um, like uh, two groups of people. So that's. But it's still. It stays kind of simple. We have a lot of like. Um, and now, some, yeah, yeah. And do you, uh, sometimes you use uh, like video. Um, video work is that um, found footage or is it something you um, produce? It was like one, um, for example, one video, video, what we did, what we shot was like, it was a um, a new work we produced, but it was somehow a pre-work for a performance. So it mm-hmm. had, like, we like to also reuse material mm-hmm. that is like, or like our, we like to reuse our research. And we think like there's like, like, yeah, to kind of um, not constantly change the topic or like that we really we like to stay with something maybe this is a little bit like um working in a like more like in an artist studio in an atelier that you really like you you know work with the material that you have for a long time and you don't have to constantly change the topic and and Mm -hmm. and i think this is something we like to kind of shape it and remodel um Mm -hmm. um and really um somehow yeah Mm -hmm. um yeah, and I imagine if you would have a huge budget, I think we would just maybe work longer and, and yeah. make like, I don't know, different small um, artworks on the same topic or something like this, but not necessarily going huge, huge stage stuff like this. Yeah. You're both uh, like 30-somethings um, and uh, you're doing uh, your work, you're preparing, you're traveling, um, you're quite successful. Um, many students nowadays, especially in times of, of this COVID uh, epidemic, are quite depressed because they um, they have the feeling there's no way to do anything, there is no um, no public, no life, no any, not anything. What would you tell these people? To encourage them, for example, young young students. Mm. Yeah, I think it doesn't function for everyone, but for us, it was really nice that that our last project we really remodeled and we out of a Mm -hmm. a theater piece we created an audio walk, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think this situation was also giving us a bit of inspiration, or was like challenging challenging us, and we were thinking like. How can we now bring our our works to people that um, that cannot come to the theater, but we mm-hmm. wanted to come to them? So this worked really well that mm-hmm. people could download our performance and make a walk through public space. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely difficult um, for people, but yeah, also I'm thinking that um, the audience is so tired of uh, looking at um, live streams or video recordings and I mean they can also be really interesting but it's just everyone is anyway sitting at the computer the whole day and working remotely and uh, therefore I think uh, it could be helpful to think of other formats like something that um, you can bring to the audience in, in alternative ways. 
I would say you're the best proof that it doesn't take much. It only takes uh, like a cable or a, a cardboard box uh, and you, you can do theater <laughs> for any public in the world. Um, thank you both for this talk. And um, uh, fortunately, we have uh, Joachim Kapui from Wiener Festival. <laughs> yeah. So I can ask, um, where does this take place? Because I need to make an announcement at the end of this podcast. That is absolutely true. It takes place at Brut Nordwest. So repeat, uh, um, it takes place at Brut Nordwest. We should repeat Which it. I've never been before, but... This is the new from Brut. Yes, that's the new place where Brut takes place. It's a new und, venue. Genau, and the performance findet im Rahmen eines Programms statt, das im letzten Podcast gefeatured wurde, das Programm Mitten, das schon läuft, wo es Künstlerinnenlabore gibt, ein Festival Lab und mitten am Abend eine Schiene mit Keynote, Performances und Konzerten und die beiden Ladies äh, sind in der Performance-Schiene am Abend und wir freuen uns riesig darauf. And it is uh, next week the 10th, I think, right? Tenth, the Friday, the tenth. Tenth. So I repeat, it's um, <laughs> we're looking forward to Mitten am Abend on the 10th September with Söd Zeiringer uh, doing a new uh, performance work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Das war der Festwochen Podcast. Wir verabschieden uns aus dem Studio Wunderbar. Die Signation stammt von Ursula Winterauer. Danke fürs Zuhören und bis zum nächsten Mal.